Namaste, everyone. So today let's talk about the next nakshatra from the series, which is Anuradha, which dwells in the very heart of sidereal Scorpio. Now, as you may know, sign of Scorpio very often doesn't have really great reputation, but I do hope that after watching this video, you will be able to also see hidden beauty in it. So let's begin. Anuradha Nakshatra is often referred to as the birth start of Srimati Radharani, the beloved of Lord Krishna. And therefore, Anuradha Nakshatra is often so strongly associated with the idea of devotion, devoting ourselves to something higher, and very often comes with this deep longing within ourselves to just find something more in life than what just this external reality has to give us. And this devotion or bhakti are actually so beautiful qualities of Anuradha Nakshatra. The only moment when those qualities become problematic is of course when Anuradha Nakshatra starts to devote itself to the wrong things. And you know, this can be especially seen when, for example, moon dwells in Anuradha Nakshatra, that sometimes those natives tend to, you know, try to replicate similar type of devotion that Srimati Radharani perhaps had for Krishna. But the mistake they are making here is forgetting that Lord Krishna was God, you know. If you devote yourself to such an extent and sacrifice yourself so much for the divine, the result of that will always be love and bliss. But if you try to devote yourself and completely forget about yourself in a human relationship, unfortunately, the result of that can often be abuse and it will not leave you with the same feeling of bliss and happiness. So for all Anuradha natives, it's really important that before they dedicate themselves to something, that they actually think twice, you know, is this object of their devotion really actually worth it? Is it really the highest? So as a result of this deep devotion and dedication that Anuradha natives often have, indeed, they tend to sacrifice a lot of themselves either for others or for the cause they believe in. And in fact, they can go to extreme, you know, in that sometimes. Which is why, you know, sometimes indeed this nakshatra may be seen as a little extreme one. Because it really like, you know, in a way those natives, whenever they go into something, they go into it with their full heart, with their whole being. But indeed, whichever planet you are having sitting out there in Anuradha nakshatra, you need to frequently ask yourself, are you not perhaps sacrificing too much? Another consequence of this deep devotion that Anuradha Nakshatra has is also very deep loyalty. These people are fiercely loyal. Once they dedicate themselves to something or to someone, they're fully into that. But unfortunately, also because of that, whenever those people experience heartbreak or rejection, they need a lot of time to get over it. Because once they get themselves loyal either again to the wrong person or the wrong idea, it's really hard for them to just let go of it, to just detach from it and move on. So as much as their loyalty is to a huge extent their strong side, but can be quite dangerous too and can lead also to some too deep or even too toxic attachments. So attachment is naturally speaking the biggest enemy here. It's like a single quality that Anuradha Nakshatra natives need to be really watchful of. Because if they attach themselves too much, they are inevitably going to suffer. It will inevitably hurt them. This is why, of course, moon in Anuradha Nakshatra, it's still in the sign of Scorpio. It's still in debilitation, which means it's still so prone to experience things like depression, 
hurt. But we need to also understand why those things happen. And they do happen because of excessive attachment, inability to let go when it's the right time to let go. Which means a practice of healthy detachment is incredibly important for all Anuradha Nakshatra natives. And meditation, daily meditation, can greatly help with that. Due to those intense attachments, naturally Anuradha Nakshatra can sometimes become, under certain circumstances, especially if there are some additional afflictions happening to the planet dwelling there, a little bit too possessive and also jealous. Because, you know, when there is this deep fear of losing a person in our lives, or, you know, losing something that we have been working for. Naturally, you know, as a reaction to that, when combined with possessiveness and attachments, it forms jealousy. And that's another quality that Anuradha Nakshetra natives need to be quite watchful of. Now, Moon seated in the sign of Scorpio, in its very heart in Anuradha Nakshatra, undergoes debilitation because it's surrounded by these turbulent waters of Scorpio, these constant transformations. And this naturally makes Anuradha Nakshatra natives very, very sensitive in every sense of this word. They are emotionally sensitive, but they are also sensitive to beauty. They're spiritually sensitive as well. They are also very, very sensitive, even, you know, when it comes to actual, you know, perception of the world. They can even develop some sensory sensitivities, in fact. So indeed, you know, Anuradha Nakshatra has a lot of this very gentle, very sensitive nature, which can be a great blessing in certain circumstances. But again, if along with this sensitivity, they are not cultivating confidence and strength, then sometimes it can make them slide down to depression or slide down, you know, to some form of pain or suffering rather than empowering them. This sensitivity, as you can imagine, gives Anuradha natives actually great intuition and great premonition too. The only problem though is that very often this true intuition of theirs is actually covered by layers of emotions, fears, and doubts and, and other thoughts that the mind is simultaneously producing. But once they truly follow their heart, you know, Anuradha natives will always end up in a good place. Which is why I find it so important for Anuradha natives to really daily meditate, daily calm down your mind, daily detach yourself from these layers of thoughts, emotions, and other voices within you, so the true voice of your intuition can actually guide you, and so you can benefit from it. Now, Anuradha Nakshatra also very often shows traits of some sensitivity of the nervous system itself, especially when Moon sits in that lunar mansion. And that sometimes can make those natives overly alert, you know, as if they are continuously waiting or expecting for something to happen. As if they are always, you know, in, a, in this subconscious fight or flight mode. And that is very understandable if you consider that the actual animal of Anuradha Nakshatra is a rabbit. It's super interesting because rabbit actually is the only mammal that is being born already with eyes wide open, you know. Ancient Egyptians saw, because of that, rabbit to be the symbol of enlightenment, because they saw it as a symbol of this, you know, conscious awareness, which is, of course, the bright side of Anuradha Nakshatra. But on the other side, if you are continuously alert, it can also lead to your mind being continuously restless. It can lead to insomnia or other troubles with sleeping. And that's, of course, the dark side of it, when this quality gets out of control. Anuradha Nakshatra natives, above everything else, are very deep thinkers. 
these are not people, you know, who just like superficial things, superficial relationships, superficial art. They think really deeply about things and very often they go really deep into those. Of course, again, the danger here is that sometimes in their own research or in their own spiritual search, they may go a little bit too much, you know, down the rabbit hole to the extent that they forget the very purpose why, why they even went there in the first place. But on the other hand, you know, this, the same quality is what makes Anuradha Nakshatra natives great researchers, what gives them this very strong drive towards spirituality, towards searching for the deeper meaning in life. They always look for the deeper meaning in everything, which again can be a beautiful quality, but try not to overdo it as well. More than any other nakshatra, Anuradha is very drawn towards spirituality, occult sciences, esoteric sciences, such as astrology, for example. Because, you see, Anuradha nakshatra natives, they spend extraordinary amount of time in their mind, in their thoughts, and really pondering about these very deep questions in life, these very important life questions which is also what sign of Scorpio represents. It represents this dark cave, you know, the cave which represents your school itself, where you go deep within to find the light, to find the meaning, to make sense out of the world around us, out of the chaos around us. Sometimes in their deep thinking, Anuradha natives can also go too much to the side of idealism, for example, I have personally noticed that natives who have strong placements in Anuradha Nakshatra are some of the first people who are going to believe in things like twin flames, for example, right? They tend to over-romanticize things. They like to, you know, like uh, believe that the person they meet is somehow special or the only one. Even though in reality, as my Guru Dev explains, there's no such a thing as twin flame or, or a soulmate or a twin soul. The soul is always one and complete and perfect. But we do tell ourselves, you know, stories like that, these type of mythological stories just to make it easier for ourselves, to make it more interesting for the mind. And Anuradha Nakshatra, among all other, you know, stars has really, you know, strong tendency towards that, to over-idealize things, over-romanticize things. But perhaps the most beautiful quality of Anuradha Nakshatra is its constant strive towards improvement. The actual symbol of Anuradha Nakshatra is a lotus flower. A flower which begins its life in a very, you know, muddy and dirty place. But the moment it goes above the surface, it blossoms as the most beautiful of all flowers. Similarly, Anuradha Nakshatra natives have this amazing, you know, capability to, you know, whichever circumstances they find themselves in, no matter how difficult, they are able to make something beautiful out of it. They are able to grow out of it, evolve, improve themselves. They are able, you know, to take anything, no matter how, how, how ugly or, or, or unpleasant, and turn it into something actually beautiful which is something also quite special about this particular lunar mansion. Because if you would look at this lunar mansion, you know, very carefully, you will notice that its brightest star, its Yogatara, actually falls into the Amsha or division of Goddess Matangi in the D20 chart. And Goddess Matangi is literally the goddess, you know, representing this almost alchemic, you know, ability to take things which are perhaps ugly, unpleasant, dark, shameful, and turn them into something beautiful, into something worthy, rather, you know, to just, than just avoiding, you know, confrontation with them. And that is perhaps the most beautiful quality of Anuradha Nakshatra, which also reveals, you know, how humble actually this Nakshatra is at heart, because of course it's being ruled by Saturn. 
and it's a truly beautiful quality and something to cherish and appreciate. So I hope that this video was helpful to you in any way. And of course, if you would like to learn more about Anuradha Nakshatra, I invite you to have the look at the links below. You'll find there the link to this particular Nakshatra class or the whole Nakshatra course if you would like to dive deeper into it. Thank you so much and Namaste.